back from spring break and we are rolling into the second half of our term. We're going to be coming back to uh, the text, but we're going to move away from Guerrero and move to our CBM text, the ABCs of CBM. So we're going to start with basically a review of CBM. Now I know this is review for you because you have already learned about CBM in your reading core classes. So we'll do just a brief review and then we're jumping feet first into our CBM text. So we're going to start with what it is that you need to know or our learning objectives. The first question that you're going to ask yourself as you're going through the content and at the end of the week is what is CBM? You want to be able to define that. Second, you want to be able to answer the question, why do we use CBM? Third, you want to be able to explain what are the steps for implementing CBM in a classroom. And then fourth, where can you go to access sample CBM probes? So those are the things that by the end of this week, you want to be able to say all four of these I can do. So CBM stands for Curriculum Based Measurement. And CBM was developed by researchers at the University of Minnesota, uh, Stanley Dino, Lynn and Doug Fuchs, and Joseph Jenkins about 40 years ago. When we're talking about doing CBM, we're doing it in reading, written expression, and math. Now, I've linked for you in our shell a couple of different websites to go to. One is Dibbles for early reading. Uh, it is only reading, but that's expanding. The next one is Ames Web. There's a quick video on how that works. It addresses reading, math, writing, and spelling. Easy CBM is a good place to get started with uh, graphing and taking your data. And then my all-time favorite is Intervention Central, and I've linked those for you in our LMS shell. So as you are reading through the materials this week, these are questions you want to be able to answer regarding CBM. First of all, ask yourself, is this a formative assessment or a summative assessment? Next, you want to be able to answer the question, how often is CBM administered? And the answer to that is going to depend on two key questions. One, how quickly is it reasonable for teachers to expect to see growth in a particular skill area? And two, how much actual intervention has the student received? In all cases, it's important that the student is really receiving focused instruction to address the skill deficits that the teachers want to see improve over time. The more difficult the skill is that's going to be tested, the longer time between testing so that students can receive targeted interventions. For example, with reading like letter names, phoneme segment, segmentation, letter sounds, that could be as often as every week or two because students can make rapid progress in these areas if they're receiving in-depth interventions. But if you're looking at something like word passage and reading fluency, this takes a little longer for improvement. So maybe not any more than every other week or so with those measures. If we're looking at multiple choice reading comprehension, every three to four weeks. And the same is going to be true for math. Again, about every three to four weeks. Next, when you're thinking about CBM, you want to be able to answer the question, who is the student being compared to? Now, we spent the whole first half of the term talking about some more formal and standardized assessments where we're looking at norm referenced and things like that. In a CBM, we're really just comparing the student's own progress to the student. Now we do have some norm referencing data available for CBM for most areas, but for the most part in a progress monitoring setting or situation, we're really just comparing the student to the student. Once you have collected CBM data, the question is, how are you going to use the results? So how will you make instructional decisions based on your data? And then the other thing to consider is what kind of information are we actually getting from this particular assessment? So let's take a minute to compare CBM to assessment that we already know about, like the year-end testing. So let's just look briefly at this chart. So if we look at our questions, is it a formative or summative a test? With year-end testing, it's definitely summative. With CBM, we're actually, it's a formative assessment for us. How often is this assessment administered? Year-end testing, once a year. CBM for progress monitoring, this is ongoing, and it could be as often as once a week to every couple of weeks, depending on what we're measuring. The availability of the results, 
We don't get year-end results, uh, year-end testing results until many weeks and sometimes months later. But with CBM, we get the results immediately after administering the assessment. Now, when we want to compare the results with year-end testing, we're looking at national averages and scores for our students. But with CBM, this is, gives us the opportunity to compare individual to individual progress. We can compare individuals across a classroom, across a district, or we can look at a national norm. In terms of the usefulness of the information, uh, year-end testing judges student outcomes. But CBM allows us to evaluate and modify our instruction based on what we, the information that we get, and then the type of information provided. For year-end testing, we're looking at grade level in various subjects. But with CBM, it can be more specific. We can look specifically at the skills that have been mastered and not mastered. So there are six steps for CBM implementation, and they are first, we select the probes to use. Second, we administer and then score the probes. Third, we graph the scores. Fourth, based on that information, we set goals for the student. Fifth, we then make instructional decisions about how we're going to teach the student. And then sixth, we communicate progress to the student, to our other teaching colleagues, and to the families. Now over the next few weeks you have several IRIS PD modules which will allow you to go a lot more in depth with these uh, steps. So let's take a quick look at our RTI and RTII graphics. Now we talked about that a little bit in the beginning part of the term, but when we're talking about using CBMs, a lot of times we're using it in uh, with part of our response to intervention and response to intervention and instruction. So if we're down here in this tier one, this is high quality instruction for all students. And this is where we're going to do the screening. We may do uh, a screening three times a year, Dibble, something like that for early literacy. Those students who are non-responding, non-responders, go into then tier two where we're doing that more intensive inter intervention. We're going to do some more intensive instruction. And as you can see, they just go up through the tiers when they don't respond to the intervention. Then we're going to take that progress monitoring data. They go on up to first tier, second tier, third tier. In some states, there's a fourth tier. It just depends on which state you're in. Uh, and then a referral for special education services. Now we've actually got three types of CBM. We've got our general outcome measures, our skill-based measures, and our mastery measures. What this looks like for us is a general outcome measure. These are samples of performance across several skills. For instance, oral reading fluency. Then we can also look at skill-based measures. These are sample performances across a single skill, for instance, computation. And then we've got mastery measures. These are sample performances across single skills. Uh, this is where we introduce new skills upon mastery. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So if we're looking at some general graphing or some graphing of a general outcome measure, it's going to look something like this. We can see that Sarah starts in October reading about 25 words correctly per minute, and we see her progress going up, up, up over the course of the school year, and by May she's reading at about 80 words correct per minute. So this is what a general outcome measure is going to look like. Let's take a quick look uh, at what a mastery measurement would look like. So here you can see we've got the number of weeks on the bottom and here is the student's progress with multi-digit addition. We've got three and then five correct and then we go up to six correct. You can see that we've got that uh, goal line here across the top uh, and then here's our multi-digit addition, then our multi-digit subtraction, and then our multiple facts. Okay, so we can see once we get to mastery of the addition, then we move to mastery of the subtraction, and then we go to mastery of the multiplication. So this week you've got a lot to do. You're going to do some reading in the text. I've given you a couple of um, a couple of articles to read. I'm going to ask you to explore a couple of websites. I've linked four of them in the shell for you, but I definitely, definitely want you to visit Intervention Central and Easy CBM Lite, and I want you to then reflect on that. And I want to circle back around to our learning objectives. Again, by the end of this week, you want to be able to definitively, clearly articulate what is a CBM, why we're using it, what are the six steps in implementing CBM, and where, as a teacher, can I go to get some sample CBM probes. All of that is going to be in your shell this week, uh, and I just want to look at ahead really quickly. 
So let's take just a quick look at our pilot shell where we are as we've come back from spring break. I'm clicking on content so that you can see uh, where we are. And I'm going to scroll down here. We've got uh, spring break and then week nine. You can see that there are three subfolders, engage, web resources, and assess. So I'm going to start at the top here with our engage. Uh, I've included a brief, just about two minute um, review of CBM in addition to this lecture. Uh, the instructions to review chapters one through three. Now chapters one and two should be a complete review because you've already covered CBMs in your reading core. Chapter three is what you are reading for this week. In addition to uh, an article. If you're an undergrad student, uh, then you definitely want to read this article. If you're a grad student, you need to read both articles and be citing those in your reflections. Some resources for you here. You've got Intervention Central and Dibbles. AmesWeb is just a brief video of how it works. And then EasyCBM, which I just mentioned before. With assessment, Again, just to remind you, review those rubrics. You should be citing both your textbook and the additional articles that are provided to you in your reflective journals. Grad students, you should be pulling additional articles to support your ideas about practice and big ideas, okay? What's due this week uh, is our IRIS PD module RTI part two on assessment. You need a 90%, so you'll upload that. And then your chapter three reflection over the CBM text. If you have questions, let me know.